I've made my admiration for con artists no secret. I just can't help but be impressed by a good hoax, and I don't think I'll ever tire of hearing about tales of wit being used to cheat the system. But there's a line, a point where the awe inspired by the con is eclipsed by the sheer wrongness of it. And for me, today's con man definitely crossed that line. In 1997, the Barclay family are relieved that their son, who had been missing for three years, has appeared in Europe after escaping his kidnappers. But the boy that arrives in the United States and is taken in by the unsuspecting family is not their missing boy. In fact, he's not a boy at all. He's a full-grown man with an exceptional talent for deception. Frédéric Bourdon was born in 1974 in France. His 18-year-old mother was more fond of going out drinking than looking after a child, who can blame her, and his father was unknown to him. This has all the makings of a happy, stable childhood. At the age of two, a court ordered Bourdon be placed into the custody of his grandparents, his mother's parents having grown concerned for his upbringing. From here, his childhood continued to be tumultuous, with Bourdon acting out and misbehaving at school. By the age of twelve, he was sent to live at a private facility for juveniles. As is not uncommon for kids with a rocky family life, Bourdon was prone to flights of fancy, and he would often make up grandiose stories about his background or fake dramatic scenarios. While he was a troubled kid, he wasn't necessarily a bad one, and he was described as friendly and charming, with his charm only growing as years of playing characters and acting out lies passed by. By the time he was 16, he was being forced into another youth home, but he instead decided to run away to Paris. Here, Bourdon assumed the identity of a lost and homeless teenager, which I suppose wasn't too far from the truth, and sought help from the authorities. He spent the rest of his teenage years drifting around orphanages and foster homes all across Europe, each time with a new false identity and backstory. In 1992, he was 18, making him ineligible to be cared for as a ward of the state. You'd think from here maybe he'd graduate onto faking his way into jobs and making money, but no, he continued to play the part of the abandoned child so he'd be looked after, lazy bastard. But Bourdon hadn't been drifting from place to place out of a sense of adventure. In his deceptions, he would inevitably be found out and have to move on and start again. He had collected a criminal record in doing this, and his identity was known to Interpol. But no matter how many times he was caught, he never stopped. In 1997, Bourdon was at a youth home in Spain. The child welfare judge in charge of his case had given him 24 hours to prove his identity as a teenager, or she'd order his fingerprints be taken. Keep in mind the chap was 23 at this point. His fingerprints were on record, and he knew if the judge tested them, he'd be exposed and likely go to prison. He once again attempted to run away from the place, but he was caught by staff and was being kept under watchful eye. So, did our protagonist relent, give himself up and face the music? No, instead he did something pretty sinister and downright vile. It's hard to call him the protagonist after this. Using the shelter's telephone, he called the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children in Virginia, USA. He pretended to be the shelter's director and claimed they had taken in a child with an American accent. He asked if the center was aware of any missing children that matched his own description. The center faxed over the file of Nicholas Barclay, who had been reported missing in San Antonio, Texas on the 13th of June, 1994. Barclay, who was 13, had been out playing basketball when he phoned his mother for a ride home. His older brother picked up the phone, and not wanting to disturb his sleeping mother, told Nicholas to just walk home. Nicholas Barclay never returned, and had not been seen for three years. Bourdon then told the centre that the boy in the file was standing right beside him. Despite having brown hair and eyes in place of Nicholas's blonde and blue, Frederick Bourdon was of slight enough build to pass as a teenager. He had picked up a number of languages in his travels, including English, and he was now an expert at disguise. He used the file to morph into Nicholas Barclay, even getting tattoos to match the boys. Jesus, he must have been a pretty serious 13-year-old to already have multiple tattoos. Nicholas Barclay's older sister, Carrie, took a flight to Spain to confirm the missing child's identity. 
and amazingly, she fully accepted Frederick Bourdon as her younger brother. With the authorities satisfied, Bourdon was issued an American passport, and off he went. When he arrived in the States, he was greeted by Barclay's family, who were all convinced their long-lost son had finally returned home. Normally, I might make a joke about the implausibility of this 23-year-old with completely different hair and eye colour and a French accent passing himself off as a Texas teen to his family, but it's somewhat understandable. They'd be so stricken with grief, so desperate for their missing boy back, that maybe they wanted to believe so bad that scepticism wasn't even possible for them. It's quite tragic, actually. Bourdon explained that he had been kidnapped three years ago and brought to Europe, where he was forced into a child sex ring. Trauma from abuse would explain any differences in character from the 13-year-old boy they once knew to the 16-year-old survivor returning home. He explained his captors had chemically altered his hair and eye colour to avoid identification, and he had picked up a French accent as they forbid him to speak English. And it's here you just have to say, what the fuck? How could anyone be so sick in the head as to do this to a family? To go to such lengths to deceive such emotionally vulnerable people. The 13 year old was missing for three years for God's sakes. It's perverse. But deceive them he did. And Bourdon went to stay with his older sister Carrie and her own two kids. Imagine that, having a stranger who poses as lost children in the house with your two kids. If there are any doubts over how good an imposter Frederick Bourdon was, that alone should quell them. What a nightmare scenario. Bourdon continued to live with the family, researching little details to make his character more believable, for nearly five whole months. It was only in late 1997 that the ruse started to unravel. A TV programme wanting to run a story on Nicholas Barclay's miraculous return hired a private investigator to secure an interview with the family. Charlie Parker did just this, but in his meetings with the family, something about the abused boy made him suspicious. The new Nicholas was calm and collected, which seemed strange for a teenager who had been through his ordeals, especially when Nicholas was a pretty troubled child before. Nicholas's single mother had struggled with heroin addiction, and Nicholas would often get into violent fights with her before he went missing. His misbehaviour had gotten so bad, she had to ask his older brother Jason to move back in. And Jason himself was a cocaine addict, and would sometimes be out of control on binges. Nicholas was known to police, and shortly before his vanishing, he was scheduled for a court appearance. Parker noticed that Nicholas's ears appeared different in photographs, having once heard that ears are distinct, like fingerprints. This led him to further investigate, and he asked specialists if his story could be legitimate. Did his behaviour make sense? Could he really have had his eyes altered? Would he really have picked up a French accent? The answer to all of these was no, and Parker soon tipped off the FBI. He even informed the family of his doubts, but they wouldn't have it. In February 1998, the FBI obtained a court order to take Bourdon's fingerprints and DNA. Game over. The family initially would not believe it, but now it was indisputable. Frederick Bourdon pleaded guilty to passport fraud and perjury, and was sentenced to six years imprisonment. And what about the real Nicholas Barclay? Well, the story gets even more bizarre, if you can believe it. After his time with the family, Bourdon claims he is certain that they had something to do with Nicholas's disappearance. Whether by accident or on purpose, he suspects Nicholas's brother Jason and or his mother may have killed him and covered it up. This may be the attempts of a sick mind to diffuse blame and attention, but it's a suspicion that Charlie Parker shared. As I mentioned, Nicholas was known to authorities, and police had been called out to the house for violent disputes before. If Bourdon's claims are true, it means the family knowingly accepted a stranger as their dead son. That's... Uh, I don't even know how to explain that level of insanity. This line of investigation went cold after the death of Jason, who overdosed on cocaine. Since then, there has been no update on Nicholas Barclay, the 13-year-old who went missing in San Antonio, Texas in 1994.
As for Frederick Bourdon, he returned to his life of deception after his release from prison. He even impersonated a missing child again. Definitely sick in the head, but unusually for a con man, he never used his talent for financial gain, nor were his impersonations an attempt to access vulnerable children. No evidence or accusations of sexual misconduct have ever emerged. Bourdon has claimed all he was really looking for was love and attention, the type he could elicit from people as an abandoned child. He craved sympathy and affection, and it probably all stems from his troubled childhood. Whether you believe him or not is up to you, but he was obviously in some way disturbed. It's quite sad, really. He's now married with kids and claims to have put his fraudulent past behind him, aiming to provide his kids with the life he never had. Well, I hope that works out. And that's all there is to the story as it stands today. It's bizarre as it is bleak. Not many jokes or witticisms in this one, although can you blame me? Where was I going to put them? In between the child going missing and the weirdo convincing his family he's alive? Yeah, this one's just kind of a downer all around. Send in some more funny suggestions, will ya? Jesus, I'm not made of Prozac. Appeared without a trace three years ago. Tonight, a San Antonio boy is back home. Nicholas Barclay's now 16 years old. He vanished when he was 13. Nicholas says he was kidnapped and taken to Spain. He says for three years he was repeatedly drugged, beaten, and raped, all part of a sex slave operation involving dozens of missing children.